Hello students, myself Antara Kushal, Assistant Professor of EC Department of Guru Nanak Institute of Technology. And uh, this is my lecture series on RF and microwave engineering and the code is EC701 which is for the undergraduate student for VTEC course uh, for seventh semester under electronics and communication department. Welcome to this first lecture of the course of RF microwave engineering. And in this lecture, we give a brief introduction to microwave engineering. That RF means radio frequency. And this radio frequency engineering, which involving the application of transmission line wave guides, antenna, and electromagnetic field principle to the design and application of devices that produce or utilize signals within the radio band. And the frequency range is of about 20 kilohertz up to from 20 kilohertz to, to 300 gigahertz. No, this microwave engineering basically involves signals which is between 1 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz. Now, beyond this 30 gigahertz, the wavelength is in millimeter. And that is why it is called as a millimeter wave range or region. And below 1 gigahertz, we have the ultra high frequency and very high frequency range. So this is more or less the range for which microwave engineering is defined. Now, what happens if uh, suppose uh, this is, uh, let it is, uh, say that the width and the length of the of a plate is 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter. And we know that normal uh, if you from normal kbl that is Kirchhoff's voltage law at low frequencies or dc if a signal is applied in the entire copper plate as long as it is a good conductor entire copper plate will have the same voltage but that is not the case here because uh, here the wavelength of the signal is comparable to the dimension of the plate. That is why each point has a different voltage depending on the wave structure. So the traditional uh, KPL and KCL that uh, we often use for solving network problems at low frequencies or DC are no longer applicable when we come to the microwave range of signal. And this RF that is uh, radio frequency that frequencies are designed to operate in the radio frequency spectrum and this RF microwave engineering is incorporated into almost everything that transmits or receives a radio wave which includes but is not limited to mobile phone, radios, Wi-Fi and walkie talkies and digital television, satellite television. In the term microwaves usually referred to electromagnetic waves with wavelengths which ranging from about one meter to one millimeter 
and uh, the microwaves were first introduced in the technical literature in 1932 and uh, after that it continued now the subject name is rf and microwave engineering and uh, that is course name and the course code is ec701 and the total lectures are 34 for this course out course now there are some course objectives that is first one is distinguish the rf and microwave spectrum planar transmission lines and high frequency circuit elements second one is to determine the microwave passive components and scattering matrix representation third is illustrate the microwave tubes semiconductors microwave devices and fourth one is justify the microwave application and typical microwave test bench these are the course objective of this course that is rf microwave rf and microwave engineering now after the completion of this course the student will be able to understand the microwave frequency range and their application also develop the fundamental understanding of the two port rf network and matching techniques these all are the course outcome third one is learn the scattering parameter scattering matrix for microwave passive components understand the microwave tubes and devices along with their fundamental principles of operation and also learn the microwave measurement techniques these are the course outcome now this is the course content it is under module 1 that is introduction to rf and microwave spectrum typical application of rf and microwave after that microwave wave guide or microwave wave guides are there then planar transmission line and under that there are different topics in second module there is high frequency circuit elements difference in high frequency and relatively low frequency behavior of lamp circuit components and we've got passive components and their s matrix representations and many other topics in module 3 there are microwave tubes semiconductor microwave devices microwave amplifier design and there is also module 4 that is under module 4 there are typical measure microwave test winds and measurement of based on your meter now these are the textbooks and uh, reference books for your reference now in module 1 the first topic was introduction to rf and microwave spectrum now the electromagnetic spectrum that consists of entire range of electromagnetic radiation and the radiation is the energy that travels and spreads out as it propagates and the types of electromagnetic radiation that makes the electromagnetic spectrum which is depicted in this figure the electromagnetic spectrum is the range of frequencies it is the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation and their respective wavelengths and photon energies 
this is the frequency wavelength and photon energy and the electromagnetic spectrum covers electromagnetic waves with frequencies which is ranges from below 1 hertz to above 10 to the power 25 hertz Electromagnetic spectrum that comprises the span of all electromagnetic radiation and consists of many sub ranges, commonly referred to as portions such as visible light or ultraviolet radiation. The various portions bear different names based on differences in the behavior in the emission, transmission and absorption of the corresponding waves and also based on their different practical applications. From this figure we can see that the frequency range is divided into separate bands and the electromagnetic waves within each frequency band are called by different names beginning at low frequency that means long wavelength because relation is the lambda equal to c by f that is wavelength equal to c by frequency that's why if the frequency is low, then the wavelength will be long. Now, that is that uh, beginning with the, at the low frequency and a long wavelength and end of the spectrum. These are radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, X-rays and gamma rays at the high frequency with short wavelength at the end. Now the electromagnetic waves in each of these bands have different characteristics such as how they are produced, how they interact with matter and their practical application. The types of electromagnetic radiations are broadly classified into the following classes or regions or bands or types. Okay, now that is first one is gamma radiation, X-ray radiation, ultraviolet radiation, visible light, after that infrared radiation, microwave radiation, and radio waves, radio waves. And this classification goes in the increasing order of the wavelength, which is characteristics of the type of radiation. Nearly all these frequencies and wavelengths of electromagnetic radiations can be used for spectroscopy. And uh, the radio waves and microwaves are form of electromagnetic radiation which with uh, operating frequencies ranging from 30 to 300 megahertz and 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz respectively. Now, different types of uh, microwave application and technologies will use certain frequency band to avoid frequency interference and these frequencies are grouped into several smaller bands which is shown in this figure and already I have discussed uh, Previous. Okay. Now, the most commonly used frequency spectrum classification today is created by the Institute of
electrical and electronics engineers that is i triple a these are the some types of electromagnetic radiation this is the wavelength and this is the radio wave it is used to broadcast radio and television and uh, for the microwave that is used in cooking radar telephone and other signals for infrared that transmits heat from sun fires radiators and in visible light that makes things able to be seen for ultraviolet that absorb the skin used in fluorescent tubes and uh, in x-rays that is used to view inside of the bodies and objects and for gamma rays and this gamma rays is used for in medicine for killing cancer cells these are the types of electromagnetic radiation here in this table the most commonly used frequency spectrum classification is for that is if uh, that is the electromagnetic wave spectrum under uh, under the frequency band and that is the wavelength now under radio waves there is very high frequency that is 30 to 300 Mega hertz. The wavelength is ten to one millimeter. And under microwave, there are different frequency bands like ultra high frequency band that is from three hundred mega hertz to three thousand mega hertz. The wavelength is hundred to ten, hundred to ten. Centimeter, and uh, there are different bands like P band, L band, S band. Super high frequency that is SHF that is three to thirty gigahertz, and the wavelength is ten to one centimeter. And uh, also there are another bands like S band, C band, X band, K band. K band, K A band, and all these bands are used for different application. And under the millimeter waves, there is extremely high frequency that is EHF. That is the the frequency range is thirty to three hundred gigahertz, and the wavelength is ten to one millimeter. Under this millimeter waves, there are different type. Also, there are another types of uh, frequency band like K A band, which is from twenty six point five to forty gigahertz, V band, W band, and millimeter band. That is one hundred ten to three hundred gigahertz, and the wavelength is two point seven three to one millimeter. These are the different I triple A frequency spectrum. Now there are some advantages and disadvantages of this microwave. What are the advantages? That is that advantage is there are many different many advantages. Like this microwave supports larger bandwidth and hence more information is transmitted. But these using microwaves are used for point-to-point -point communication. More antenna antenna gain is possible for this microwave. Higher data rates are transmitted as the bandwidth is more. Antenna size gets reduced as the frequencies are higher. 
low power consumption as the signals are of higher frequencies. Effect of fading gets reduced by using line of sight propagation provides effective reflection area in the radar system. Satellites and terrestrial communications with high capacities are possible for these microwaves. Low cost miniature microwave components can be developed and the effective spectrum usage with wide variety of application in all available frequency ranges of operation. These all are the advantages of microwave. Now also there are some advantages, disadvantages of microwave that is cost of equipment or installation cost is high. They are they occupy more space electromagnetic interference may be occur and uh, uh, various type of dielectric properties with temperature may occur and internet inefficiency of inherent inefficiency of electric power is there that's why these are the disadvantages of microwaves but the advantages are better than the disadvantage that's why microwaves are widely used for different applications. Now that's all for today. This was the introduction class where uh, what is microwave, what is uh, RF radio frequency which has been discussed and after that uh, what are the um, in an electromagnetic spectrum and uh, what are the different types of electromagnetic radiation and what they are. After that, this is the electrical frequency band which I have discussed. And at the last, what are the advantages and disadvantages of microwave in frequent microwaves? This the advantage and disadvantage and that's all for today in the next class we will discuss about another topics on this uh, microwave and uh, rf and if there is any query you can mail me which is which has been given in past slide Okay, thank you.